uh, just try to help you in terms of uh, exams, uh, things that you should look forward to um, in terms of stoichemistry. I think it will become clear today. So today I want to look at more of, um, just kick me out, I'm trying to get in. Okay, that's fine. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so most people find it difficult, but it's not a difficult topic. Can you all see my whiteboard? Clear? So these are questions from past exam papers huh? on the topic. We will discuss certain formulas maybe that you don't know as we look, as we go through the paper. I want everyone to be there, but it's an important topic. I hope she will log in. But anyway, let's record. I decided recording, not yet. Okay, we started. Okay. Just hold on. So, so I'll send you this also worksheet so that you can try some of the questions on your own. Make sure you've got your periodic table, everyone. You need a periodic table. Okay. Oh, someone is writing on the teacher's board. <laughs> so you see, I said these are past exam exam questions. Let's start from here. So with more concepts, you also need the concept of balancing of what? Of equations. Are we all there? We can start. Huh? So now they're saying, what are the values of x, y, and z to balance this equation? So I will show you. How many carbons do I have this side, everyone? How many carbons? Oh, everyone is quiet. Can you guys hear me? Oh, my audio is not working. Mufaro, Natalie, can you hear me? Takuzo. Yeah. Yes, two carbons. Two carbons. So we put two there. So that we have two carbons. Then how many hydrogens do I have here? I've got five plus one, six. So for me to have six there, I need to put three there. Making sense now? Now when I do that, the carbons are balanced, the hydrogens are balanced, but the oxygens are not balanced. How many oxygens all together? Look at this. Three oxygens plus... Two times two, four. So how many oxygens? Seven. So I need seven oxygens here, but I've got one oxygen here. So if I take away one there, I've got six. So which means I need to put what? Three there. Three times two is what? Six. Is that clear? That was too fast. Okay, look at this. We agree that there are two carbons here. So we should also have two carbons. We only have one carbon so far. So we put the two there. First of all, so carbons, carbons. 
let's write the elements that are there. We've got carbon, we've got hydrogen, we've got oxygen. So the same side, we've got carbon, we've got hydrogen, we've got oxygen. I'm doing it slowly. So I've got two carbons here. I've put a two there, and now I have two carbons. Balance. That's what I mean. Now let's see the hydrogens. How many hydrogens is it? Five plus one, six hydrogens. But I only have two hydrogens here. So two, you need them to be six. You multiply by what? By three. So you put three. So you now have what? Six. Balance. But now if you check, I now have more oxygens on this side. So I have three oxygens there, plus two times two, which is four. What is two times two? So I now have four. I now have seven oxygen. So I've got seven oxygens there. You see this problem? I've got seven oxygens now, this side. I now need this side with the less to also have seven oxygens. But before I think of that seven, I have to think of this one here. There is one oxygen. So if I subtract one oxygen there from this, I simply now need six oxygens from this. So because it's a two there, I put a three. So it's now six. It's now, sorry, three plus, it's now seven that side, seven that side. You check there. One plus six, seven. Four plus three, seven. So it's now a balanced, which means x should be equal to 3, y should be equal to 2, z should be equal to 3. Is that clear? Now, let's look at the following. Uh, Chiedza, you managed to connect. That's good. Which formula represents a compound containing how many atoms? Three atoms. How many atoms are there? On the in A. Mfaro, how many atoms there? How many atoms? In total, how many atoms? Can someone answer? Natalia, how many atoms there? It's an easy question. How many atoms? Three. Natalia, is your audio working? You have been very quiet. So what did you say, Mufaro? How many hydrogens do I have? Just to give you a hint, one. How many nitrogens? One. Look at your formula there. Not difficult. How many oxygens? Three. Three. So how many atoms all together? Five. 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 That's not correct. There is the answer here. I've got two plus one. There I only have two, lithium and fluorine. Clear. It's three atoms. It's a simple question. Now let's go to the balancing again. Let's do the same thing. So maybe if you don't see, it's, it's written like this. It's C3H8 plus 5O2 giving us a carbon dioxide plus S. We need to find those values. Now for how many carbons do we have on this side? Three. We have three carbons here, Cheza. So we need to put three, so that these carbons are also three. So it means this is three, this is three. This is out here, because we need to have three. So that the carbons, how many hydrogens do I have here? Eight. So what do I need to multiply two by to get eight? Four. So what becomes the answer? C. Clear now? The other part was balanced for you. Is that making sense? Is it there? Yes, sir. Yes. I'll skip the gases now. We'll explain that later. Now look at this here. What is the molecular formula of this? Even without knowing the name. Yeah. How many carbons do I have? Let's count one, two, three, four. So see what? Four. 
How many hydrogens do we have? One, two, three, four. How many oxygens do we have? One, two, three, four. So what is the formula? Clear? Now, this I'm skipping for a reason. Now, look at this here. What is the relative molecular mass of nitrogen dioxide? Dioxide means two oxygens, like this. This is nitrogen dioxide. Are we agreeing? Okay, okay. What is the name of this chaser? What is the name of that effort? Nitrogen dioxide, carbon dioxide two, carbon monoxide one oxide, nitrogen monoxide one oxide. So what's the name of this? We can try that naming, name of that. What's the name of that? Of nitrogen, it's called what? This is nitrogen dioxide, we agree carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, nitrogen monoxide, one oxide, mono. So what is the formula? What is the name for this? Is there in your chemistry complete? Is two nitrogen, so it's di, not difficult, di nitrogen oxide. Di nitrogen oxide. Anyway, that's not what they're asking. So we want the MR for this. Can you now go to your period table and look for the mass of nitrogen? Because we have to add their masses so that we find the total mass of the compound. That's what we call the MR. What's the mass of nitrogen? Group five, everyone go to your period table. What's the mass of nitrogen? We only have one nitrogen, 14. Plus, we have two oxygen. So it's two times the mass of oxygen. What's the mass of oxygen? Which is your group six, 16 like this. That's how easy that is. And what do you get? MR is the easiest thing. Get 44, 46, sir. That's the MR. Making sense? Or not making sense? So can you calculate the MR of that? You now know everything. C16. H26. Can you calculate that? I'm giving you 30 seconds. Tell me what the answer is. What's the MR of that? Found the answer not yet. Done. Cheers, uh, Natalie. All right, guys, done.
I'm on a snitch, I guess. I don't know what's happening. So, Mufaro, what's your answer? It's a good one. Shades are not yet done. Natalie, can you guess? I'm done. Okay. It should not take time, huh? Because maybe it means you need to get used to, to using a period table. Because where is carbon? Is in carbon in group four. It's group four. And what's the mass of carbon? Twelve. Twelve. Times how many carbons are here? Sixteen. Sixteen. Plus, what's the mass of hydrogen? We don't even look at the period table. It's one. One. So it doesn't change anything. One times twenty is simply twenty-six. Oxygen, you now know it. I said 16, huh? 16. So sometimes the more you, you do it, you, the more you know it. 16 times 2. See? You, should not, you should not even take time to find the MR thing. Mufaro. Mufaro, is there? Is he muted? So what answer do you get? 250. Let's see. Two fifty. Two what? Two fifty. Oh, there's no need to go. They actually gave you the, the values. I didn't even see that. Two fifty, which is not there. It said two fifty. Yes. It's not correct. It's not there. Ah, oh, I see. So I lied here. Yeah. This is an 18 year, and my apologies. That's why you guys are taking time and not coming up with an 18 year. That's the font. Sorry, 18, huh? So correct that is 12 times 18. Clear now. And what will be the answer? 274. Oh. Mufaro? Can you hear us? So it was 18 there. Now let's look at the next one. A compound with the formula of that has a relative molecular mass of what? Of that. What is element X? So it means two of two of the fluorine, the mass of fluorine times two plus whatever X is. You get a clue. Huh? So what can you go and check what's the mass of fluorine? Where is fluorine in group what? Fluorine is which group? Group seven. Group seven. Se yes, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine. What you need to know in a syllabus. Those four. So now it's group seven. What's the mass of fluorine? Mass 35.5. No, check again your period table. Fluorine. 19. It's 19. 35.5 is fluorine. Oh, fluorine. It's 19. 19 times 2 is what? Is 38. Then we take away the 38 from this. Because this is contributing. It's F2. So we take away 78 minus 38. What do you get? We get 40. 40. So we want a compound from this with a mass of 40. Can you check what you are giving me? Which ones have got masses of 40? It's argon. It's calcium. <laughs> we have two things that have got mass of what? Of 40. What's the answer? Calcium and why is argon. it not why is it not argon? Why is the answer? The answer is calcium. Why is it not argon? What do you know about group two? Does group eight react with anything? Group H from a form three, it's called noble gas. They are innate, their electron shells are full. They can't react with what? With anything. Any group H cannot react with anything. Yeah? That's what you learned in chemistry. Yeah? It's called noble gases. So they can never react with anything. Yeah? So the answer is what? Is B. Are we together then? These are group eight called innate gases. Complete, very stable. They don't react. Is that making sense now? 
the chemistry. Now look at this now. This is where it starts to get exciting. Huh? So now they don't want you to go to the periodic table they've given me this. Now the equation shows you the reaction between magnesium and sulfuric acid is balanced for you. In this reaction, the mass, what mass of magnesium sulfate will be formed when six grams reacts with what? With excess, the acid is the one that is in excess. So let's go back to the equation. Balance equation, everyone. One is to one in terms of ratio is to one is to one. Follow me. Then because I'm given the number of moles of magnesium that reacted, I can calculate the number of moles. Because number of moles is simply your mass divided by the MR. So how many, what mass did we use? Six grams. Divided by the mass of the magnesium, which is the 24. What fraction do you get the 24 grams? So what, what, what do you get? What's six divided by 24? Is that a quarter? Six divided by 24 is what? A quarter. Are we agreeing? You guys are quiet. So it means you use the 0 0.25 moles. So if the experiment is perfect, you should be using 0 0.25 moles. Why? Because it's one is to one. And you should be producing 0 0.25 moles of that and producing 0 0.25 moles of that's why a better balanced equation is important. Now look at your formula here. To calculate the mass is simply the number of moles multiplied by the MR. So the number of moles of the sulfate produced we found from the equation is 0 0.25. Multiply by the MR of the magnesium sulfate. Clear. So what we simply need is to calculate the, num, um, the, the mass of the magnesium sulfate, which we call the MR times 0, 0.25. So can you calculate the MR quickly for magnesium sulfate? Don't go to the periodic table because you have everything there. You have the magnesium, you have the hydrogen, you have the sulfur, you have the... Let's do that quickly then. Quickly, Chesa. Let's calculate the MR of the magnesium sulfate. Twenty. One twenty looks correct. Twenty four plus thirty two plus four times sixteen. Huh? Correct. One twenty. So we are saying zero point two five multiplied by one twenty. What do you get to get the mass of that? Because it's a quarter of that mass. You get thirty. Thirty. Is that making sense now, Mufaro? Slowly, on how we do these calculations. Now let's look at the next question. The equation shows you the reaction between magnesium and dilute sulfuric acid is shown, balanced for you. What is the mass of the magne what mass of magnesium sulfate is formed when we use what? 12 grams of magnesium. So we need to calculate the number of moles of the magnesium that we used. 12 divided by magnesium, which you said is 24. And you can check in your periodic table. So it means we used 0, 0,5. This is 1 is to 1 is to 1 is to 1. So we should be using also 0, 0,5 of the acid, producing 0, 0,5 of this, producing 0, 0,5 of that. So we want the mass of the of the magnesium sulfate. So we said the mass is equal to number of moles multiplied by the MR. So the number of moles, 0 0,5, multiplied by the MR, I don't know, need to calculate it. It's done for you there, 120. So you get half of that mass because you use zero, you produce 0 0,5 moles. Clear. 
one more of a compound is as good as this MR, okay? So if it's 0, 0,5, it's a half. Are we together? Clear? Can you calculate the following chairs? Use your period table. MR of nitric acid, HNO3. Let's calculate that quickly then. Use your period table or your head if you have mastered some of those things now. No need to go back. Natalie, what's the mass? Takuzo, what's the mass of the nitrate thing? The MR. It's 63. 63. Why am I getting answers from only one person? The rest are not calling me. Hydrogen is simply one. Plus nitrogen, if you check in a period table, it's one nitrogen here. Plus three times 16. We have talked about oxygen before. 63 then. That should not even take, take 10 seconds to calculate them. Unless you are always forgetting the masses and trying to refer to the period table all the time. Now the hydrogen and chlorine reacts in the following ratios. Now the catch about this whole thing is to know that hydrogen before reacting is always diatomic. Chlorine or group sevens are always diatomic. So you can't have this clear. You can never have this here. Because where hydrogen on its own always exists as a molecule. Chlorine always exists as a molecule. Clear. Forming hydrochloric acid. And they told you that is true then. Are we together? Uh -huh. Now look at this here, seven tons of that nitrogen and hydrogen react together to form ammonia. When completely converted, seven kgs of nitrogen gives you what? 3.5 tons of ammonia. Mm. How much nitrogen? How much nitrogen? is needed to produce 34 tons. So this one you can do it without, you can do it from symbol, symbol nitrogen, ammonia. We are saying we need seven kgs to be able to produce 8 point what? 8.5, huh? clear? Then we are saying how many nitrogen X to produce what? To produce 34? From mathematics, you can simply cross multiply that. And you have 8.5x is equal to 34 times 7. Symbol math. Divide by 8.5 both sides. You don't need to take chemistry for that. Clear. Or well, not clear. I'm simply using math. Huh? So you should get 28 what? 28 times, huh? Are we together? Or not together? Someone is Netflix. Is there even some serious issues there with this network? Which um, relative atomic mass is not correct for the formulas? So can you find out which one is not correct? Use your period tables quickly. Which one is not? Uh, Chairs are there. You've been very quiet. I'm here. OK.
Yeah, there. Okay. So do that. Use your period table quickly, and you tell me which one is not correct. I understand. What are you not understanding here? What are you really not understanding? That's not that's what that's what what are you not understanding? I've been explaining here. What is MR? MR is the mass of something. Is the mass of a compound. MR means relative molecular mass. Even if you read your notebook, relative molecular mass. So what are you not understanding? You have your periodic table there. Unless you are telling me that you don't know what mass is and what proton number is, because that's form three stuff. Because if you go to nitrogen, there in, in your periodic table, nitrogen is written fourteen seven or the other way. 7, 14, it doesn't matter. The mass number is always the large of the two. So what, how many nitrogens do I have here? Takuzu, how many nitrogens do I have here? NH3. How many nitrogen atoms do I have? It's what? I only have one nitrogen here. There's no other any nitrogen, one. So I'm simply saying the mass of nitrogen is 14 from your periodic table. Go to your periodic table, group 5 is 14 here. Plus, hydrogen always has a mass of one, form three chemistry. Hydrogen always has got a mass of one. It's three of them. So three times one is simply three. What's the mass of ammonia? 17. Yeah. It's correct. I go to carbon dioxide here, CO2. How many carbons are here from this? Huh? It's only one carbon. What is the mass of carbon? Go to group four. Group four. What is the mass of twelve? Group four. Because carbon will be like this. If you check, or the other way, it doesn't matter. The mass number is always the three. Plus, how many oxygens do I have here? How many oxygens atoms? Two of them. Two multiply by the mass of of every. Because I want two. It's two. It's not one. So what's the mass of oxygen? Go to group six. Oxygen is always like this, or the other way, it doesn't matter. So unless you are using your calculator, you're not using your head. What mass do you get? What for? Not difficult. This is the simplest thing for, for this topic here, to find the MR there. Eh? Sorry, 44 is correct here. Yeah. Then we go to... The answer was also obvious anyway. Then we go to carbon CH4. No need to go to the period table. You now know that carbon is 12. We have talked about it here. Plus hydrogen is always one, one times four, four. So what's the mass? 16. What's the problem with the last part? Because I have two oxygens, I don't have one oxygen. So it can't be 16, it's 32. So what's the answer then? It's a wrong MR. Because this is all not just oxygen. Is that making sense now? Or not making sense? Now, ethanoic acid, I want to give you the formula eh, so that you calculate which one is correct. So ethanoic acid is this C2H5. O H. Can you calculate the MR and tell me which is the correct answer? C two H five O H. Calculate the MR that you've got your period table, you've got your calculators. Yes, one. Mufaro, you've been quiet. Are you there? Yes, I'm here. Okay, let's calculate the MR of this.
what he said. Chiesa, do you agree with him? Chiesa? In Natalie, the girls, the girls are quiet. The boys, 46. The girls, you are participating now, you are quiet. 46. Yes, I agree. They made the answer obvious. They should have put another 46 to confuse you. Then they changed the number of atoms. Anyway, in terms of atoms, this is 2 plus 5 plus... So two seven eight nine. Huh? They made the answer so obvious. Hmm? <laughs> Clear. So they have twisted it a bit. Or oh, uh, <laughs> that is not so obvious. There another one for you to practice. It's good for you to practice. C two H. I think it's H. Is that an H5? Yes, H5. Then an S for sulfur. Then hydrogen. So this is an S here, not 5. So what would be the mass of that? Hmm? Two, let's see. Twelve, so two times twelve, which is twenty-four, plus hydrogen is five plus that's so that's six plus thirty-two. So I actually have twenty-four plus six plus thirty-two, sixty-two. Correct. Clear. Oh, sorry. Then there are certain things that you don't need to so chemistry. For example, water is formed when 46 grams is combined with what? So oxygen, hydrogen. Look at what I was saying. 48 grams, look at this, uh, is combining with how many grams? With 6 grams. Huh? So now we are saying 2 grams. What mass of oxygen? We don't know this mass. X. What? So we're saying this will form what? Will two grams. That's obvious it's less than 48. Eh? So from this, if you want, you can do this. That's what I was showing you. What's happening to my pen here? So anyway, so it will be 48 multiplied by 2 is equal to 6x. Divide by 6, divide by 6. And what do you get? What's the answer? 16. No? What's happening? Uh -huh. Okay, we want to move on to the actual question. Then this is what we talked to those that banked the last lesson of whatsoever reasons in nature. I think someone wrote on my... Now... What mass of sulfur is present in this? Huh? The relative molecular mass of sulfur is... This. That's the mass of one more of sulfur. It's the MR. Is equal to 160. What mass of sulfur? How much sulfur do I have? I only have one sulfur, which is what? 32. Clear. As easy as that. As easy as that. The chemical composites of two substances, X and W, are given here for these formulas. Don't be intimidated by these formulas. Eh? Okay, this is an 8, this is an 8, don't be intimidated. Which statement is correct? X and W contain the same number of oxygen atoms. Is it true? Yes. 
because we have got eight, they have got eight. We don't have any other oxygen atoms clear. Are we agreeing, everyone? W contains three times as much silicon as X. Let's go to W to this here. How many silicon? How much silicon here is there? Three. Yeah? How much silicon is in this one there? Silicon, we only have two. Huh? So that's not correct. Yeah? It's not three times. Wrong. Clear. X contains twice as much aluminum. X has got twice, and this has got one. Correct. You see that? So the answer is one and three. Making sense. Some questions have been repeated. Now, let's do the balancing together here. Or you can tell me what you think, how we should balance this animal here. How we should balance it. Lead, lead seems to be balanced. Nitrogen is not balanced at all. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The oxygens. Mm. What a question. So we have oxygens, oxygens, nitrogen, nitrogen. So how do you balance this whole thing here? Now let's start from the, maybe let's try from, so that don't be intimidated by this. How many nitrogens are the, are, do we have here? We have two nitrogens, huh? but the oxygens we have six. Because well, two is multiplying everything inside there. Huh? We've got two nitrogens. So if we put two nitrogens there, will the equation balance? Two nitrogens, will it balance? Okay. Can I show you another way of answering this question? A very quick way. You can do what is called the elimination. Huh? If you put two there, two there, two there, let's see what happens. You have two leads, two leads. Are we agreeing? Two leads here, two leads. Okay. Now, because I put a two here, I'm actually having two, these two nitrogens times two times these two, I'll have four nitrogen. So it's not balanced. Two nitrogens times one is two plus times this two, four. So it's not a balanced equation. Did you get it there, um, Farah and Cheza? Now I let's- I didn't get it. You didn't get it? Okay. Like this. I'll break down to you nicely so that you see what we are doing. It's not difficult. Now, let's stop here. How many leads do I have before I even think? So I've got lead, I've got nitrogen, I have um, oxygen. So I only have three, lead, nitrogen, oxygen. This side, the same lead, nitrogen, oxygen. Can someone tell me how many leads do I have? I have one. And I also have only one lead here. The two affects everything in the bracket. Just like you do 2x plus 5 in minutes. Two affects everything in the bracket. So if two affects everything in the brackets, how many nitrogen do I have? I'm sure now you can see it. How many nitrogens? Two times one nitrogen is what? Is two. How many oxygens do I have? Two affects everything in the bracket. Two times three is what? Six. Clear now. Let's go to the other side. Well, it's not a balanced side anyway. How many nitrogens? I only have one here. How many oxygens? Can someone tell me up this two? plus two plus one, five. Cheza, it's not making sense. So I was saying now, Cheza, if we put a two there, like what they are suggesting here, a two and a two on this. The challenge is the, the this becomes two. But this now, remember it was, it was only one. Okay, sorry, we're saying this is two here, like this, huh? 
So I'm saying if we put a two here, this is two. So this is balance is fine on this part. But now I was saying on the nitrogens now. That's where I was coming. How many nitrogens do we have here? We have two times two. We now have two nitrogens because we put a two there. But now I was saying two times two is two. Multiply by this two, we now have four hydrogens. So it's not balanced. That's why I said it's wrong to do that. Let's remove it. Let's do it slowly. You get it. You just need to. It's not difficult. It's a mathematical topic. Now let's put two there. Two, two, two is there suggesting. They're saying we should put four here. Then two there. Then two there. Let's let's see that. So how many leads this side? Can someone tell me how many leads here? Sir? How many leads do I have? Lead is PB. So how much do I have? Only two. The two only affects in the what's in the bracket. Huh? Clear. So when you have now the nitrogen, you have to multiply two times one is two. Multiply by two. So it's four nitrogen. Then the oxygen is two, follow me, two times three in the by six. Six times two, twelve. Now let's go to the other side. PB, I have two, only two. Nitrogen, I have what? Two times one, four. Let's see the oxygens now. Two oxygens here are they? How many oxygens here are they? Four times what? Times two, which is eight. So it's eight plus the first two here plus the other two at the end, two, 12. Balance what? Equation, what's the answer? Clear now. No need to even go further. Ruben Faro, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Okay, it's been very quiet. Now we are moving to the structured Structured, structured questions. Then we want to do this question together nicely and slowly. Don't worry about everything else. Insoluble salts are made by precipitation, whatever, an equation of precipitation of barium is given below. Then you've got that reaction. Then this reaction is used to find out the value. We want to find the value of the X that we don't know for the hydrated magnesium sulfate there. Okay. Now, what are they saying? A non mass of hydrated magnesium sulfate was dissolved. So, by the way, you get this normally the last part, last question of your paper for, or you get this for actual, for the actual practical. They can give you this calculation, so this questioning. A non mass of hydrated copper sulfate, X, was dissolved in water. Uh, excess barium sulfate uh, chloride was added. The, pre uh, the precipitate of the barium sulfate was filtered, washed, and dried. You don't need all that for this calculation. Finally, it was weighed. Now, the mass of the hydrated, so what I simply need to mention is certain things here. When we say hydrated, who knows what does that mean? What's the difference between hydrated and anhydrous? What's the difference from chemistry? If I say hydrated, what does that mean? Hydrated magnesium sulfate. It means the magnesium sulfate is what? Hydrated, it's in water. Hydrated magnesium sulfate. It's mixed with water like this. Anhydrous, it doesn't have water. Clear? Hydrated. So we are given the mass. There. Now then the mass of the barium sulfate that was used is this. The mass of one more, it means the MR. They say the mass of one more is the MR, no need for you to calculate it here. Then the first part, see this, how is this? Is. Find the number of moles of barium sulfate formed. What did you say about number of moles? Number of moles is the mass produced divided by the MR. What mass of the barium sulfate? There. 1.1398. What is the MR we are given? The mass of one more, 233. 
What do you get? Here's your calculator. Simply mass form divided by the MRI. That's how easy that is, the first part, one mark. What do you get? You get zero comma what? Zero, zero, six. I got six. Six? One point, it's 1.3. Did you put one point? I oh, don't okay. think you put one point. Look at this, it's one point here, one dot. It's one point. So it's zero comma zero, zero, six. Clear? Zero comma zero, zero, six. Yes, what are you saying? Please me explain again. Okay. Are you reading your chemistry? Number of moles is simply mass divided by the MR, the mass formed divided by the MR of the compound. They told you that the barium sulfate formed is 1.398. And the mass of one more of barium, one more, it simply means is the MR. No need to calculate it. It's the MR there. If, even if you were to calculate it, you get the, exactly this. It's 233. So I'm simply saying the number of moles formed is my mass. What is the mass of the barium sulfate there? Divided by its MR given there. I'm simply plugging in. I need to master this formula here. I need to know it in and out and how to use number of moles is simply mass of the mass formed divided by the MR. If it's reactants, the mass that we are using divided by the MR, clear. So it's 0, 0,06, we are done here. Clear, everyone? Clear or not clear? Clear. Then we go back to here to the equation. That's why the equation is balanced. So it's one is to one is to one is to one. Follow me. What now it means is, is if we are producing, if we are using barium, what are we calculating here? Barium sulfate. If we are producing 0, 0,006, it means here we should also produce 0, 0,06. Because it's one is to one. And we should be using 0, 0,006. And we should be using 0, 0,006. Clear. That's why the balance equation is important. It's balanced for you. If the ratio is one is to one is to one is to one, yeah? clear, we've calculated that. So now there is no, now let's go back to the other part here. They are now saying the mass of the magnesium, okay? The mass of the barium sulfate formed, we have the mass. Huh? The mass of the hydrated huh, is this, clear. The number of moles of this, this. Now, because we don't know X here, we can't use this and say divide by the MR. We are going to be stuck. What is X? Huh? You use the equation here. Clear. Can you see this? This magnesium sulfate here is the one that is forming this whole compound here. And we are only using one magnesium sulfate. So it's as good as exactly 0, 0, 0,006 without any calculation. Clear? The hydrated magnesium sulfate. Hydrated magnesium sulfate. This means hydrated magnesium sulfate. Aqueous means the magnesium sulfate is in water. So it's as good as this. Though they didn't put the now, the magnesium sulfate here that they're talking about here is as good as it's just the same thing as this here. Magnesium sulfate. It's aqueous. It's in water. It's your hydrated magnesium sulfate. So the magnesium sulfate and the barium is one is to one, according to the equation. So if I'm forming 0, 0,06, I should also be using 0, 0,06 of the hydrated magnesium What? And I should be using 0, 0,006 of the barium chloride. Why? Because the ratio is 1 is to 1 is to 1 is to 1. I use the ratio for volumes and moles only. We don't use for mass. Clear? So that's why I'm saying we are only using, we are also, 
we are using 0, 0,06 without any calculation here. Then this part is the only trick part, where they say the mass of one more of this. Look at this. So now 0, 0,06, follow me, moles of magnesium sulfate is, give, is, is, is from what mass? Is from hydrated magnesium sulfate, it's 1, 1,476. 0, 0,06 moles is giving us that mass of magnesium sulfate. So the question is they're asking one more will give us what mass? Or will give us X if you want it. I'll do this. I'll do the cross multiplying like what I was doing. So we get 0, 0,006X is equal to one times that remains 1.76 divide both sides by 0, 0,06 so what do you get what do you get here you divide by 0, 0,006 that cancels here what do you get what do you get Your calculator, we get 240 what? 246 grams. 246. Okay. Now, so 246 is the mass of the whole thing. And we don't know how many water molecules. Huh? Follow me, follow me slowly. You get it. So 246 is the mass of what? Now, they're saying the mass of one more of this magnesium sulfate this magnesium sulfate here is contributing 120 of this whole mass of the whole thing including how many water molecules we don't know so to find the mass the mass of x water molecules we are simply saying 246 minus 120 what do you get what's 246 minus 120 126. 126 grams. Now to find X, what is the mass of one water molecule? What is the MR of water? It's 2 plus 16 here, that's 18, of one water molecule. So how many water molecules are there? We divide by 18. So how many? 7. So it means our formula is MgSO47H2O. Okay. Let's do another one like that. Slowly, it will make sense just now. Okay, it will make sense. Now look at this. Um, maybe this one. I'll skip it for certain reasons. Uh, what I wanted to look at for now something that looks X almost similar like this huh? um, uh, tacos, what are you think are you there tacos, what? Yeah. six grams of cobalt carbonate huh? cobalt carbon was added to 40 cubic centimeters of what of this so the moment they give you volume and concentration you should know a special formula number of moles besides with number one i said number of moles is mass divided by mr the other formula that you always need to remember to memorize is number of moles is concentration times volume clear number of moles is concentration times volume where my concentration is in moles per cubic decimeter and my volume should be in cubic decimeters. If the volume is given in cubic centimeters, because 1,000 cubic centimeters gives you one cubic decimeter. So if the answer is if the volume is given there in cubic, in cubic centimeters, we divide by 1,000. To convert it, because volume should always be in cubic decimeter. Because your concentration is given in moles per cubic decimeter. Is that making sense, Cheza? The volume should always be in cubic decimeters because the concentration is given in moles per cubic decimeter. So the first part there, that's what they want straight away. The number of moles of the acid, I'm given the volume and the concentration. 
So N is equal to C times Z. Let's do that together. What's the concentration? Two. Multiply by what's the volume? What's the problem with the volume? It's in cubic centimeters. So we have to convert it to cubic decimeters. Like that. Faro. Did you write down the formula that I gave you? On N, it's there in your textbook. Concentration times volume. So what do you get? Zero comma what? Uktakuz wa? Chieza. Zero comma zero eight. Zero comma zero eight. Follow me. Now, Takuz, what did you get how we, we found the zero comma zero eight? Concentration times volume. The volume should always be in cubic decimeters. Okay. And they always give it you in cubic centimeters most of the time. Okay. So now I'm going to wrap this. We now I showed you the calculation. 0, 0, 0,08. Now, Takuzo, let's go back to the question. Before we even answer this, I want everyone to go back to the equation. It's one is, let's do with the ratios. One is to what? To two. To one. To one. To one. Is to one is to six to one clear of the whole combat. Ratios. I'm not answering anything. I'm just looking at ratios here. This is one. This is two of them. This is one. This is one. This is one. These ratios are important because now when we, we have calculated one of them, the number of moles, like what we have done here, we've called it the number of moles. We now go back to this. So we calculated the acid is zero comma what? Eight. So how many moles should I be using of the cobalt? Half of that. Because it's two is to one. So it's zero comma zero four. It's just a half of this from the, the equation. Yes, your question. Oh, you're saying yes, you're agreeing half them. Then this here is also half. Look at this, because this is one one. So we, we should be using, we should be producing zero comma zero four. We should be producing 0, 0,04. These are moles. We should be producing 0, 0,04. Follow me then. Clear now. Then this, remember, it's 0, 0,04. Then there's 0, 0,04. Of course, this is times 6. Huh? Okay. It's fine. We're not worried about that. Now, how many moles of the cobalt? You see how easy that is now. It's now easy, boss. Yeah. You have done everything. It's 0, 0, 0,08. No need for calculation. 0, 0,04. Half of the number of more of the acid. Clear. Make sense? Number of moles of the, we have done that is equivalent to this boss. is 1 is to 1 with this. So 0, 0, 0,04. You see how the topic is it's not difficult. Huh? 0, 0, 0,04. Make sense now. Cheza or slowly. Now mass of one more. We said mass of one more is what? It's MR. They are saying don't calculate this MR. They've done it for you. Clear. So what's the maximum yield? The maximum yield. So this is theoretical. The maximum yield, remember, is the mass. Mass, we said number of moles is equal to mass divided by MR. So mass is simply equal to the number of moles multiplied by the MR. How many? 0, 0,04. Multiply by the mass 238. What do you get? Use the calculator, Mufaro. 0, 0,04 multiplied by 238. We get 9. Point what? 9.56. 52 grams. I got 9.56. Yes, 9.52 grams. Uh, yes. 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 Where did the six come from? What? Where did the six come from? The? The six, the six on the second page. Uh, the six is not six here. Uh, it's not six. I didn't even write it. Huh? I'm simply saying this is, these are ratios. This is 1 is to 6 is to 1. But in terms of moles, now if I actually want it, 
it's 0, 0.04 times six water. They are not asking about the water. I'm not worried about that. It's clear. That is, if they asked for the number of moles of water, it's simply 0, 0.04 times six, because this is one is to six. It's clear now. Make sense? Maybe a question is answered. Now, the number of moles of the acid used, what number of moles of acid did we use today? 0, 0.08. Now, one more. What's your question? Uh, yes. Peter, I didn't hear my name. No, uh, there I didn't calculate anything there. We are simply picking from this here, straight away from this, to show that. The thing we are... On what? From the. From. The maximum yield. Uh, uh. Maximum yield is the mass, the theoretical mass that is produced. Well, what's your formula for calculating number of moles? Number of moles is MR times that, mass times MR. So the mass is number of moles times the MR. The number of moles there we have it, 0, 0,04, times the MR of this year. No need to calculate it, because they told you that. That's the mass of it. It means if you were to call it the MR, you get exactly this. So it's simply the number of moles times the MR, right? and you get this. That's all we are doing. It's the theoretical mass, because in an experiment, so many things, it's, it's very rare to get that mass. Clear. That's why we, talk of, we, we, we want to talk of percentage mass in the, uh, with the actual mass that is produced, in the, what, the, what they are leading you to now. Now they're saying one more of the cobalt is this. The number of moles of cobalt in six grams. So you see, go back to your formula here. We are given the mass and the MR we're given. So it's six divided by one one nine. Because it's the mass divided by the MR. So what do you get here? What do you get? What do you get? Natalie, I guess this. 0 0.05. 0, 0.05. Let's go and see why this, they are saying this is an excess. Now let's go back here. Cobalt, we are talking of cobalt here. Yeah? Cobalt, there, this. We are using, if we use, the question said we use the 0, 0.08 moles of the acid. We should be only using 0, 0.04 of the cobalt. But from the actual question here, we are using 0, 0.05, which is greater. Remember, we should be only using 0, 0.05, but we are using this. So this is greater by 0, 0.01. It's in excess. Excess. No. Guys, if you want this topic to be very easy, you have to remember formulas. Now, if you struggle with formulas here, number one, I try telling me that you're struggling with math. Suppose this is mathematical, and it's not even so much math. I've given you how many formulas since we started. I've only gave you, given you three formulas. We have been using three formulas, and the only formula that I introduced right now is I said, if you are given concentration and volume, you use which formula? You use this formula, N is equal to C times Z. And I said N is also equal to mass divided by MR. As simple as this. Only two formulas that you have been playing around so far. And concentration is in moles per cubic decimeter. Volume should be in cubic decimeter. If it's in centimeters, you have to divide by a thousand. Why? Because 1,000 cubic centimeter gives me one cubic decimeter. So that's why when I give a volume like this, I should divide by what? By a thousand because it's not in cubic decimeter. 
the moment I'm given of concentration and volume, I should never think of this formula. I should think of this formula. Number of moles is concentration times volume. Is that making sense? Maybe. Number of moles is con so what do they want? Moles of the acid. Didn't they give you the concentration of the acid? There. The concentration and the volume. So can someone tell me how do I calculate the number of moles of the acid straight away? You have the formula here. Concentration. You say volume. um 20, multiply by 20 over what? What's the problem? It's in cubic centimeters. Okay. It has to be in cubic decimeter. So divide by a thousand. We are converting okay. it. Then multiply by 0, 0,3 like what you said. So what's the number of moles? It's 0 0.006. 0, 0,006. Do you know, can I tell you something? The problem we always have every is that I think your predecessors, they tell you that this topic is so difficult. And you approach it with, with a different mentality to think this topic is difficult. It's not even difficult. Okay, so approach it with, a, with, a, with, with that, uh, with a confident attitude. But now, you, if you, call, you approach it with an attitude, shades away, you think, oh, this topic is, is so difficult. I've heard about this topic. That's what always happens with students, especially in schools. They tell you, ah, this topic is difficult in chemistry. It's not difficult. I've told you two formulas. Number of moles is the mass of a substance divided by its MR. Okay? MR, that's a compound. Or number of moles is concentration times volume. Okay? Of course, we'll talk about the other formulas. It's, it's just remembering formulas and how to apply them. Huh? So one thing that you need to be good at, look at this here. Let's go back before we even continue. Is to be good at changing subject of what? Of formula. That's where you're missed now. So if I say concentration is the number of moles is equal to concentration times volume. You don't need to remember anything else. You simply need to remember this. So what is the formula for concentration? Look at this. What will be the formula for concentration? Who can give me the formula? Change, make C the subject of the formula. What will be the formula? N over V. Yes, N over V, not difficult. N over V like this. So just like we said the other formula, we said number of moles is mass divided by MR. So if you remember this, it's easy to find the MR or to find the mass. Because mass here, you multiply this. So this is equal to number of moles multiplied by the MR. So it's just a matter of changing formulas. Just remembering the formula, then you play around with it. Now, look at this. How many moles of hydroxide were used? We are given, again, volume and concentration. So we use the same formula. Number of moles is concentration times volume. What volume am I given? 40 divided by 1,000. So that is in cubic centimeters multiplied by its concentration, 0, 0,2. What do you do? 0 0.008. Okay, 0 0.0. Takuzo, you have this? 0, 0,08. This is the part now where students will start having difficulties. But let's go back slowly. I hope it will make sense now. Where they will ask you which one is in excess. They love those questions. Sometimes you will be like not to get it. Sometimes you get a question. Now, which reagent is in excess? Or they can say which one is a limiting factor and give a reason. Now, let's go back to balanced equation. What now this equation is balanced for you? Let's do the ratios. You don't have to calculate anything. Is two is to what? Is to one. Is two sodium hydroxide, one sulfuric acid, one sodium sulfate, two water. Those are the ratios. Clear? Agree? I'm dealing with the ratios. I haven't answered the question. So these ratios now, I now consider what I have calculated here. I want to do it in two, in two ways. Look at this. If I used 0, 0,026, if I used 0, 0,06, 
how many moles of the acid should I, how many moles of the hydroxide should I be using? How many moles? Can someone tell me how many moles? Use your ratios. How many moles should I be using? Mufaro, Chiesa, how many moles should I be using? Isn't that twice? Twice. So multiply this by two. Multiply that. 0 0.012. 0 0.012. So what's the challenge here? I'm actually using less. Can you see that? Because I should be using 0 0.012, which is greater than this. So I am using less. So which one is in, uh, in excess? Sulfuric acid. Let me do the opposite of this. Let's play around with this again. Let's start from the hydroxide. If I'm using 0 0.008 of the acid, I should be using a half of the sulfuric acid. And do half of this from meth 0 0.0, 0 0.04. But you are using more than that. So sulfuric acid is in what? It's in X. Takuzwa, if you don't be shy, did you get it? Is it there? You have lost it. Kieza, did you get it? Kieza? Yes, I got it. You got it, huh? So that's the reason why it's in sulfuric acid is in excess. And we explained that you can even shower together. Okay. Mm -hmm. We have lost tacos on our own. Okay, I want to look at this. Yeah? So the other formula that I'd never talked about is the gas law. We'll talk about it just now. The gas law, which talks about room temperature. So you've got about three, three key formulas. Okay, let's look at this here. Oof, I wanted to have to be there. Anyway, we are recording this. Clear? Now, are you guys there? See, chemistry is a nice subject. Eh? Don't be intimidated. Now, so something, write something here. Maybe uh, there's other TP. I'll mention something here. So there's a gas law in chemistry. It says there's one more. Maybe you've read about it or you've forgotten about it. One more of any gas. One more of any gas at room temperature. At other TP has a volume as a volume of 24 it was found that it is a volume of 24 cubic decimeter clear that's the other thing that you need to know one more of any gas so it only applies to gases huh? one more of any gas at room temperature has a volume of 24 cubic decimeter clear uh you have just joined today. I was saying, write this down. One more of any gas at room temperature has a volume of 24 cubic decimeter. It doesn't matter whether it's sulfur dioxide, as long as it's a gas and it's at room temperature, which is around 24, 26 degrees, it will have a volume of 24 cubic decimeter. Clear? Which means we now have a different formula. Remember, we have two formulas for number of moles. I said number of moles is equal to mass divided by MR. You now know that. I said number of moles is equal to concentration times volume. The third one is number of moles is equal to. So if you want the number of moles is equal to what? If you consider this, is the volume of gas huh? divided by 24 cubic. As long as this is at room temperature. Only applies at room temperature. Are we together? Only applies at room temperature. 
Is that making sense, everyone? You see how we use that now. It only applies at room temperature. The number of moles is the volume of a given gas divided by 24 cubic decimeters. Clear. Making sense? It will make sense, yes, no. Which means the volume is equal to that times that. Anyway, you now know that. Now let's go back to our question. And do it together. Together. Now, 9.12 of anhydrous iron sulfate was heat. Anhydrous means it doesn't have water. It was dry. Clear. Was heated. Like this. Calculate the mass of the iron two oxide formed and the volume of whatever formed. So let's do that slowly. They, they are giving you a clue. One more of that. What did you say? One more means it means the M. It means don't calculate the M out of this clear. Make sense? Straight away, the number of moles of the iron sulfate. How much iron sulfate was used? Number of moles mass divided by the MR. We use 9.12. And what is the MR? 152. See that? Not difficult. What do you get? What are we getting here, sir? Zero comma zero. Do you all agree with my answer? Zero comma zero six. You guys are very quiet. Now you're not using a rubber. Zero comma zero six. Can you see that? Now you have an idea of this, huh? Well, let's go back to the equation. Let's deal with the ratios of what's happening. With the ratios, yeah? So, 2 is to 1, is to 1, is to 1. These are ratios, huh? Then the ideal moles, how many moles here? 0, 0,02, 0, 0,06. So how many moles there? Here's a half of this. So half of that is 0, what? 0, 0,03. Then this 0, 0,03. Then this 0, 0,03. Make sense? So without any calculation from the equation, 0, 0,03. Clear? Then the mass... Look at your formula here. Mass is number of moles times MR. So you need 0, 0,03 for this part here. 0, 0,03 multiplied by the MR of ion 2 oxide. Can we now go to our periodic table? Unfortunately, we have to go back to our periodic table so that we find the mass of ion, the mass of oxygen. We know it. What's the mass of ion? It's near copper zinc. Say. What's the mass of ion? We've got two ions there. What's the mass of iron, everyone? Fe. Periodic table. 50. Go to your 50. Six. So two times, was two of them, times 56. Plus the mass of oxygen, we now know it's 60 times 30. So what mass do you get? For one more of that. What mass do you get? One sixty. So we are now saying zero point zero six multiplied by one sixty. What do you get? Forty-eight grams. Hmm? Oh, sorry. 48 grams is the Four answer. Oh, is this, sorry about it, yes. Four point. 48. Yeah. 48 grams. Huh? So the mass of one more here is the MR. Sorry about that. Mass of one more simply means the MR. I didn't see that. The one we calculated there. The mass of one more is the MR. Then the actual mass is that times that is from this. 
MR times number of moles. So we get 48 grams. All together. Make sense? Then the number of moles we said from the equation 0, 0,03. How do you calculate the volume there? Look at this. I told you that the number of moles is the volume divided by 24 cubic decimeters for a gas at room what? Room temperature. So the volume there is the number of moles times 24 cubic decimeters, which is 0 0.03 times, I'm getting it from the equation there, 0 0.03 times 24 cubic decimeters. Because one more will contain 24 cubic decimeters. So 0 0.03 will have less than 24 cubic decimeters. So you get 0, 0.72 cubic decimeters. Making sense? Cheza? Is that making sense now, this topic? The formulas, we're talking about the formulas here. Formulas, formulas, formulas. I'll give you any four formulas. Four formulas, and you should be following. It's not difficult. It's not a difficult topic. Uh, formulas. Master the formulas. Then the topic will become easy, if you can put it that way. Play around with the formulas. Play around with the formulas. So this one, I'll leave it for now for certain reasons. Now, an O of copper is uh, okay. Is the mineral or whatever is mixed with uh, the sulfide. So anyway, the analysis of one sample assures that you've got 38.8 grams, uh, 38, 13 .8 grams of the ore combined with 4.8 of copper and the rest is sulfur. So if the rest is sulfur, it means 13.8, I add this plus this, subtract from that, so that I find what? I find how much clear? How much, so how much from your calculator? Was everything should be 13.8 minus, in brackets, 4,8 plus 4,2. What do you get? You get 4,8 mass of sulfur. Then the number of moles of the atom. What did you say about number of moles? Since we started the topic, mass divided by the M. So what's the mass of the copper here? 4, what? 4,8 divided by what's the mass of copper in your periodic table? That's all. Go to your periodic table, what's the mass of copper? Number of moles, the mass given divided by the mass. So in the, anyway, that's the relative atomic mass because it's an element. What's the mass of copper? Copper, copper, transition, metal, periodic table. It should be having a periodic tables. Transition metals down there. What's the mass of copper? Copper, zinc, zinc, copper. Lead that table there. Someone to give me the it's mass of 64. copper? 64. 64. 64. So what do you get? 4,8 divided by 64. You get 0.075. 0 Let's go to iron. Iron is Fe from your period table. So 4,2 divided by what's the mass of iron? Do you remember? If you don't remember, go to your period table. You have looked for iron before. What's the mass 56. of iron? 56. So what's 4.6 divided by 56? 4.6. Divided by 56. 
number of moles. Then sulfur, 48, divided by, what's the mass of sulfur? Sulfur is below oxygen, group 6. 32. So what's 4,8 divided by 32? 0 0.15. 0 0.15. Now, we want the ratios. So we, what's the smallest ratio? 0 0.075. 0 0.75. So we divide everything by the smallest ratio. This you're dividing by itself, 1. 1. This 1. 1. This should give you 2. 0 0.15. So the ratio is there. So what's the formula? C U F E. How many sulfur? Two of them. S T. I'm simply combining for my ratio and forming a formula. How is there? Don't, 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 don't think it's a difficult topic. Eh? No, maybe the last one for today. Eh? Here they are still there. Eh? We haven't lost you. Here though. They see there. Eh? Hmm. Now, so this again is to help you to calculate the mass of unreacted nickel uh, cobalt. Now, the number of moles of nickel, you see, this one they have done it for you. Huh? The number of moles of the sulfate is 0, 0, what? 8 of the what? Sulfuric acid. So let's go back to the equation. 1 is to 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 7 is to 1. I'm simply dealing with the ratios. I'm not doing any calculations. Then I, they've actually calculated for me, boys. They simply did volume times concentration to get. Then now let's look at this. So the acid here is 0, 0,08. So if I use 0, 0,08, I should be using 0, 0,08 of the nickel carbon. And I should be producing 0, 0,08 yeah? moles of this. I should be producing 0, 0,08 moles of this. I should be producing 0, 0,08 moles of this in the first equation. Clear? Then this nickel here is 0, 0,08. Yeah? So this will be 0, 0,08 times 7, because it's 7 is to 1 here. But for this one, it's as good as 0, because it's 1 is to 1 with this. It's good as 0, 0,08. Yeah? That's all. But I'm saying now the number of moles of the carbonate without any calculations, number of moles, moles is 0, 0,08. Or well, this one is one with the sulfuric acid. Clear? Then the mass of the nickel carbonate, this one, reacted, it's the number of moles multiplied by the mass of nickel carbonate, which is 119. What did you get? Nine point what five two huh? almost similar to the other question. Nine point five two. Clear? Then the mass of the unreacted nickel carbonate. So let's go back. How much nickel carbonate did you use? Twelve grams. And how much was only used? Nine point that. So 12 minus 9.52. What do you get? 2.48. Clear. Yeah. 
the next part. The experiment produced 10.4 hydrated nickel sulfate. Calculate the percentage E. The maximum number of moles of this that could be formed, we talked about it. We said 0, 0,08 from the equation. 0, 0,08. Then the maximum mass is the number of moles multiplied by the MR, which they calculated for us, I think. There, 281. So multiply that, what do you get? We get 22.1. Percentage yield is the actual mass produced divided by the theoretical. Theoretically, we should be producing this. When it's maximum, times 100. So it's 46.3%. Making sense slowly. That apples was a need to watch one of the videos. So that was I can ask me to send you a video there, okay? maybe to help you catch up or do things slowly. You can do it this whole week bit by bit yeah? on this topic. I think it can help. The rest are quiet, I'm sure you are sorted now. So it means I can send you this paper. It's a nice one. It has many questions, huh? See, up to 55 pages, huh? It's cool, huh? So I'll send you this. I think let's stop it there. Then tomorrow, what are we having, Matt? Huh? Then we see you for Matt. By the way, if you have missed topics that you might be having issues, let me know. Huh? Clear? That you might want us to go through. Huh? Let me know. Are we together? So we see you tomorrow.